ist süß. Soll ich mir jetzt wieder holen? Wow. Oh, hello. He's tiny. Yeah. So find by the roadside. Well, that's what they say. He has been jumping around here, so all his legs seem to be working. He's got like a little sore on his tail here, so I don't know what's going on there. Uh, um, so he was just frozen? Yeah, they so said he was just frozen and some taxi lady drove over him. So Close. they stopped and picked him up. And then when they drove a little bit further, they saw another bigger one dead on the side of the road. So I don't know if that's his mom. So there is a trip there. Yeah. So there's a chance we can... Well, age-wise, I don't know. We'll have to see. It doesn't look very old. Yeah. So you, you wouldn't just find a trip? Wouldn't find his mom because we know she's dead and he needs a mom. Nice. Wow. So. Well, we'll see how he goes. Yeah. Sleepy buddy? The boy? I didn't really know. I just wanted to check his legs if they were broken and they weren't, so... I wanted to do something to get parts. So our sick bay has gone from being empty to having one, two, three, and now four patients. There you go. It's a lot of dried blood. Mm. It's a bit raw. Yeah, I mean, it, that's it, it just feels like it's just it's the bone. Yeah. Okay, so... Yeah. That's it. Feels like bone. Must be a little With thin a bit. Yeah. yeah.
here's baby number 32 so this is now her second day here um, so now she's just sitting getting some sunlight um, so sunlight also plays a big part in um, the recovery she is eating mostly on her own she seems to have forgotten that there's some bananas here What's that? So she does seem to be not fully aware of her surroundings, um, which seems to be quite a common thing with our car crash um, victims. Um, but hopefully soon she'll start to realize what's actually happening around her and start to show more wild monkey qualities and she doesn't seem bothered by me at all Cindy seems to have adjusted very well. Um, she's here with Susie. Cindy's, of course, over there grooming one of the males in the cage next door. Uh, it looks like Susie's a little bit uh, um, got her nose up about it and walking around saying, what's going on? These these are my male friends. But uh, yeah, this is, this is actually quite amazing. Um, Cindy's quite an old female, so it's good that she's getting on with, uh, with the local troop and things like that. So we'll see how how well she's going to go and um, how well she gets on with everybody. This is day two of Cindy moving over um, with Susie. Susie is just sitting here. Today is a very cloudy day, so the lights are a little bit difficult for my camera. And as you can see, Cindy is enjoying the view. She's really happy. She's still calling and talking to everyone. Very chatty. Um, and she is getting along with Susie very well. And they actually slept at the same perch, huddled together. Um, and Gizmo Troop is still very excited for her coming by, visiting her. Um, I'm wanting to know what she's doing. Well, who knows what her life was before, but uh, she certainly seems to like this environment. She's safe, she's got food, um, she's got company, she's not being attacked or chased, and uh, she's certainly not being kept in a little cage. So I'm not too sure why she was pulled out of the wild or what the reason was for it, but at least it looks like she's very content here, uh, starting to make friends, and uh, yeah, I'm sure she's going to love it. Well, Chibi, as you can see, is settling in uh, very, very nicely. Um, there's no real fighting or anything like this going on with the troop. Um, he's got Jesse as a, as a foster mom or a mom to look after him. I'm not too sure how long ago Jesse was born or how old she is, but uh, she's an excellent foster mom and very, very good natured. Uh, she used to be the mother of uh, Gremlin and Bizu. Uh, so she knows her stuff, she knows what she's doing. And uh, there hasn't been any um, altercations between the two of them. They're getting on very, very well. So hopefully uh, she's going to be the one to take him out into the enclosure 
and uh, starts showing him the world once he is ready. Um, Chibi, of course, loves his food for some reason. Most of the photos we've got, you've got him uh, eating or having something in his mouth. Um, so he really loves uh, his fresh fruits and stuff like this around that he can eat. But as I say, he's doing very well. There hasn't been any uh, altercations with the troop or anything like that. Uh, he's settling in nicely and uh, Jesse is looking after him and slowly teaching him the different uh, monkey manners that he's going to need once he goes out into the enclosure. This is JB with his foster mom, Jessie. Jessie is very curious. If I go any closer, he will try to... Uh, update on quarantine. We have Nita here, the 21-year-old. And the family group, who I do believe today will have names. Uh, I think Miori, thank you Miori, has stepped up to name all three of them. Uh, so she was here for quite some time when we were short of people. Um, she's from South Africa, she helped us out a lot um, with the babies and stuff. And she's offered to name these guys, so we're just waiting for a confirmation on their names. But they've settled really well. Uh, look healthy. Uh, so it's just a matter of time now. I have quarantine. Hey. <laughs> Our Middlesex intern. So he's uh, learning the ropes up here at quarantine, as um, we can only have a limited amount of people here. So. Uh, Dustin, Cornette and myself uh, will be the ones cleaning up here. So it is a bit of work, it does mean that uh, first shift every day uh, we do need somebody dedicated to this. So uh, it's not as easy as just bringing them in here and putting them in cages. It does take a bit of work and it takes somebody else off the road off away from the other shifts um, and of course that's going to continue because we have three other juveniles arriving and they will go into this cage uh, I think it'll be another week or two before they arrive so again it'll just extend the amount of time we have to be up here cleaning and these guys I think it's been about a week and a half so they've still got two and a half weeks up here before they move But no problems. Hi, sir. Hey, my boy. You're in a good place now. Hello. Who's that? That's Luna. Luna, okay. Luna the lunatic. <laughs> yeah, you see that other monkey? This one. Oh, you see it's me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And who's that one? That is Herbie. He's cute. Okay. This is Sally. And this is the little one. Lulu, sorry. Lulu, so that's the one. That's the one that will go with the special needs. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hi, CP. Oh, I know. So what, it, it, they were saying she's got a fractured skull? Yeah, so she was taken off some wonderful people who wanted to eat her. Gosh. And I assume they must have either killed mom or injured mom or something to get her off. And um, she must have been injured in the process. God. Well, straight over to uh, quarantine. So uh, these three little ones will settle in there and get used to the place before we try and find some place to uh, to move them. 
uh, the other little one has gone through to sick bay because they say she's suffering from head trauma so we want to just see what's going on there so our new little arrival that just came into sick bay is actually a baby from this current baby season making her baby number 31 <laughs> this baby season never stops um so now she's here and um, so we are going to have to reassess her situation and um, she could possibly move into full-time baby care in neverland but we have to see then if we also have the people for that but um we were told that she does have a fractured skull and has some brain damage and is slightly delayed on her right side but so far she does seem to be moving quite well she is very responsive and alert as you can see she's very um interested in her surroundings she's very nervous and stressed at the same time she does keep them climbing up you can't see <laughs> She is very nervous and alert. Um, she does keep climbing up the crush cage um, and she's moving around quite well. So I'm not sure if that's just from the stress so far, but otherwise, she seems to be not too bad. So hopefully, with some more time and, and care, she'll be able to move around and hopefully, she won't have to join Calypso. She's very cute. She's eyebrowing me a lot. And her story was, um, they aren't quite sure what did happen to her mum, but she was stoned um, as people tried to eat her. And that's how she got her fracture in her head. But now she's here and she's safe and she's gonna have a good life. Well, not just our orphans, some of our uh, banded troop relaxing and grooming themselves um, up close near the house. Um, they really are having quite a good time. It is getting drier and drier, uh, so we're hoping for some rain soon. But everybody seems to be getting on rather well. Well, I'm not sure if you remember little... Uh, Dora, she was one of the, came in late 2020 and uh, she was fostered by Holly. You can see how her face has blackened, how she's settled in quite a bit. Here we have uh, Horst. Horst was born in 2017 and came to us in 2018 and he was fostered by Buttercup. Wow, we've been here watching Totsi. Just on the other side, we have Duca, one of our other orphans from this year. He was our very, our fourth orphan to arrive after his mum was uh, killed in a car accident. He's here with uh, Tommy, also a previous orphan, who was found alone on a golf course. And just over there we've also got Dobby, one of our other orphans from last year.
well if you remember little Howie came through from the Johannesburg Wildlife Vets um, he arrived around about the 13th of, Jan of January his mother was killed in Potchestrum which is quite a long way away from us um, he's been fostered by some people for a while and uh, then he found his way all the way through the um, wildlife vets to the sanctuary and uh, he now he's with his foster mum Bizu and uh, he's doing extremely well Excuse the background noise, but it's the time the crop sprayers spray the oranges in the vicinity. Uh, this is just a little update uh, on Bell. You can see uh, doing very, very well in the enclosure. So for a monkey that's uh, that's blind, uh, she does extremely well finding her way around, um, finding where everything is at the moment, looking in case somebody's brought her some food. But uh, really enjoying it in Calypso's corner with all the others and uh, getting on extremely well. So this is actually where Cuddy sleeps at night. And um, we have a box up there and a box over there, but she wants to sleep here for some reason and she will not move. So we've made this kind of roof for her and she gets a hot water bottle, but um, Belle seems to be thinking that it's more of a little playground for her. Well, of course, little Nino, who could forget him? I mean, he's, uh, what can I say, it's remarkable. He's just got become part of the troop, part of the little family. He's really having a great time in this massive enclosure. So much space to run around and play and just do what he likes, just being a Samango monkey. There's a lot of little berries and things like this that they're finding and able to eat and leaves and things like this. Um, so he was uh, a home away from home and uh, doing extremely well. And he certainly does keep us entertained with some of the little mischievous things he gets up to. But uh, he'll be, Nino will be the little Samanga that he always is. And uh, it's great to see them now and again and how well they're doing.
Talk to the Tiny Angel is now officially a member of Global Troop. Yay! <laughs> this is now, um, I think, her fourth day in Troop. We're no longer watching her. Um, she really is just a Troop monkey now with her foster mum, Lucy. We're all so happy for her. Even when she came in, for being an expat, she had absolutely no interest in being near humans. She spent most of her time in Disneyland um, watching Teo in James Troop. And it was just heartbreaking to see. She was just so desperate to have her own troop back. Um, so it's just so rewarding to see that she's here in a troop with the family again. And she's loving it. So they've just enjoyed main feed and now they're enjoying the sun setting for another night where they're going to get all cuddled up. So it's been over 24 hours that uh, Tati the Tiny Angel has been in Global Troop. So you can't actually see her. The two babies you can see are Tony and Pascal. There's Tati. She's with mom Missy and the two juveniles and um, the one not eating the corn on the left that's Abby and the one grooming themselves that's Red and Red is one of Missy's previous um, orphans that she's adopted and he's very protective of his little sister. That's our two boys, Tony and Pascal. So as you can see, she's always staying close by to Missy. Here's Martini. Here's Tony again. Here comes Pascal. No, he's not coming into frame. Missy's on the move again. So is Totsy. And there's Pascal in the front. Tony and Dottie have run into the trees. You can see Dottie with her corn. So overall, she's doing amazing. We're all very proud. From left to right, little G, Red and Django. So little G, 2019 little baby, arrived with the injured head, doing very, very well. Django arrived pretty much at the same time, um, around about the 6th of February. Um, he was 12 weeks old with a broken arm. He had to have it splinted, so he had it in a splint and gave us a little bit of trouble for a while. Red, you've also seen a few times. Um, also 2019 little orphan. Arrived with a broken clavicle, and this group is doing very, very well. There's Pascal at the bottom, and then Tony sliding down. 
Matimi. Pascal arrived in November 2020 uh, from Nelspreit. Uh, apparently his mom was stoned to death. And there's Abby on the left. Another member of the Global Work and Travel enclosure, Dumbo. These are all members of Totsi, the Tiny Angels' new family. Dumbo arrived in 2018 when he was about four or five months old. As often after his mum was hit by a car. Totsi, the Tiny Angel, is the one at the bottom on the branch. Little G just jumped across. And there's Martini just jumped up. Mum, Missy on the ground, looking up at the trees, see where her new kid is. Well, you can see Missy's quite confident about leaving, leaving Totsi the tiny angel with the other babies and juveniles, which shows that she's just doing really well in the group. Mum's happy, we're happy. Yeah, she is just going over near the other monkeys. I think she saw mum go by, so she's climbing down. Changed her mind. I think she's looking for Mum Missy. Looks like Red's coming over and keeping an eye on her. He's been very good with this integration. Following her around and just seeing what's going on. Making sure she's alright. So now our little one, hi, seems to be able to eat more on her own. She's not too keen on broccoli. Yeah, 
seems to be doing okay and um, should be going to the feds tomorrow. There you go, you got it, Nora. Yeah, good job.
So it's Skunky with Glen, Jenny and Katie. Um, they have just been up to the fence when the females were there. Seemed quite excited by them, so that's good news. Just trying to spend a bit of time outside the cage to allow them some time to interact with the monkeys rather than just with us. There's Jenny, always in the way of the camera. Jenny. And there's oh, Katie popping up. Say hello, and then Glenn in the background. Katie and Glenn. And there's Jenny. We're still spending time outside the cage for now. And then just a small portion of our time inside with them to get them used to other monkeys rather than us. So we're down here at Skunky with the three Skunky babes, uh, Glenn, Jenny and Katie. Uh, so they did a quick quarantine and then they moved to this intro cage. And they've been in here for about a week and a half. And we've gradually reduced the amount of time people have been in this intro cage with them. And today we're actually going to just let it maybe one or two of the nicer troop monkeys in just to see how it goes. Um, one of the juveniles would be good uh, so they can start to form some bonds with the similar aged. So this is Reggae, so she's one that spent a lot of time with uh, the earlier babies from this season, Brew, Kinney and Poonam. As you can see in this section, uh, the difficulty with older babies, even though uh, the mom is interested, the youngsters aren't interested in being held by her, so it's a constant thing that they're trying to get away. You'll see she tries to pull the little one closer, but instead of him hugging onto or holding onto her, he's more interested in getting groomed and playing. Um, so unfortunately they're at an age that's very, very difficult um, to actually now integrate them on the foster mom technique. Uh, we have to go through a much longer and harder process which takes a lot more time. Oh Glenn. Go away buddy. So just to the right of me we've got the three earlier season babies. Uh, Brew, Poonam and Kinney. So it's this is Poonam inside Bruce just outside and then this is Kinney
so they just had their morning milks. So, so far good signs from the babies. They seem quite confident they've approached Rage a couple of times. Hard to see with the sun, it's very bright this morning. Just let Victoria in with Skylar. <clears throat> she um, is what we call a safe monkey to leave in unobserved because me and Ellie are going to go monitoring Skunky Troop now, which is just around the corner. So here's Victoria giving Skylar a lovely groom in the morning sun. And of course the favour must be returned. But as Hocus comes along, part of the alpha group, then you can see that what's going to happen now. So Skylar stops grooming Victoria, as this often, often happens with the troop dynamics. And instead, she self-grooms. Just takes the focus off any kind of drama that might be happening. So as soon as the alphas come along, then females stop grooming. Just to de-escalate any aggression that might happen. Because Skylar's not part of the troop yet. Even though she's had lots of monkeys in and out, she's she's not considered quite part of the group, so she must still respect the hierarchy um, and the order. And Miss Victoria, who everybody knows and loves. She's our famous girl who likes to touch the cobwebs in between the fences and... She doesn't shock herself, but she does have this funny hand thing, which I think we've caught on video before. Where she goes to touch the fence, but she doesn't actually touch it. Very calm nature, quite often one of the um, outsiders of the group. She's low ranked, but she does enjoy to come in with Skylar. So it's good bonding time for them before Skylar's part of the group. Excuse the pronunciation, but I haven't heard a name being said before. But uh, this is little Osga. She also came with the group from the Johannesburg Vets. Um, she had trauma to her head or head injury. We were not too sure of all the details. She's certainly loving the food and everything that's available. Very, very good appetite. Um, moving around very well. I can't see anything uh, wrong too much with her movement at all. Rolling around and playing, playing with her little teddy bear friend. Uh, some of them are quite strange. We actually have to remove the eyes of the teddy bears because the eyes are the thing that frightens them. And all of a sudden when these eyes pop up, it scares them. So in some cases we've had to remove the eyes to make them more monkey friendly. 
but as you can see it's the coordination seems to be good I can't see any um, side effects of the trauma pupils and everything like this aren't dilated at all um, moving around fine playing fine so uh, yeah I think she's going to be okay to go back uh, to a normal troop I can't see that there's anything wrong with her she seems to be having a lot of fun and keeping herself entertained and not just sitting there which those with hand trauma would do um, she's not too scared well she's kind of frightened of people whereas on the hand, other hand those who got trauma um, seem to be far more trusting because they don't really know what's going on So this is number, what are you doing, Tiki girl? This is number 31, one of the babies that arrived from the Johannesburg Wildlife Fair. And she's very cheeky, she's very playful, as you can see. What you looking at? So she is the one that we were told um, had a fractured skull. <laughs> and that she had some brain damage. And as you can see, she's a bundle of fun. Hey! So you can hear in the background our Global and James troop are fighting with each other. Well, thank you everybody. We've come to the end of a, another exciting episode. There's a lot going on at the foundation at the moment with all these new arrivals, keeping us very, very busy. Um, by the time some of you see this, it will uh, already be my birthday that I'm celebrating. So if some of you do want to contribute, there is a, a link that you'll see on the screen here. Uh, please go there and uh, buy me a pizza. This will go towards revamping the foundation um, and just makes us keep the place nice and tidy. For those that have contributed, thank you so much for our supporters that are continually donating via PayPal. We really appreciate it and that's what's keeping us going. It's your support. Um, your comments and things like this, viewing our pages, watching Facebook, Patreon, uh, Instagram and now TikTok. Thanks guys, we appreciate it and we'll see you in the next video next week.